And once again, we want to open Wireshark and we want to start our capture. But first, we want to look at one thing. So if I click on Capture, Options, and I look down here, you see this Enable Promiscuous Mode on all interfaces. What that does is, it tells the network adapter to turn off its MAC filtering and capture all packets. Since the majority of you will be connected to a switch, we're only going to see the traffic to and from our machine along with the broadcast traffic. Where this promiscuous mode comes into play is when you have a hub or something that is sending all of the network traffic to the machine. Then in promiscuous mode, we would see all of the network traffic. One other place that this can come into play is the time when you have a wireless network adapter. Older versions of Wireshark would require the card not to be in promiscuous mode to see the ethernet traffic. This newer version does not have that problem. If you encounter an older version of Wireshark, and in the case it's not capturing packets, that might be the actual cause. So now I'm gonna start a new packet capture. I'll select my wireless network connection. Remember, we want to discuss a process and methodology for reviewing the data. We will briefly visit this here. And as we continue to build our skills, we will enhance and hone our process. So I'm gonna to go to a couple of websites now and generate some traffic. I will continue with my theme of cars. So I'll go to my browser and I'll go to astonmartin.com. I'll go to porsche.com. Jaguar.com and Maserati. Now I've went to multiple websites. So now what we want to do is we're going to look at these websites. Remember, if you're following along, you can use any websites you want and the process is going to work. And that's the key is the process. So now I'm going to actually stop my packet capture. So what we're gonna do is, I want to go all the way up to the top here at packet one, and we got our UDP, which is our SSDP, and we got all this ARP traffic, which normally you wouldn't see on a network, so I have to investigate that. Something's going on with my cable router, so I'm not gonna worry about that right now. And as I go down here, I'm looking for the UDP traffic. So we know we want is a DNS query for our network traffic. There's a number of other DNS queries. So the first step is we want to review the communication parameters. We look for the DNS and then move to the packets. There are different ways to do this. I like to use the bottom window and it comes with practice, but as you look at practice and you do things, you get used to exploring the network traffic. So again, there's my Aston Martin. So there's my query for astonmartin.com. So remember, after I get the DNS query, shouldn't take that long to get the response. There's the response. Immediately following this, I get information for the connection. So it comes with practice, but more you look the work at it, you'll get better at it. So I said there's different ways of doing it. So I'll pull this bottom window up. So we have it here in the information block of the upper window or the top window for the Wireshark tool, but we also have it down here in the details block, which is the hexadecimal dump. So we got it either place. So which one you use is entirely up to you, of course. But now we have the IP address of Aston Martin, right? So we have a lot of different things. So this is the Aston Martin. So it's not encrypted. If it was encrypted, I wouldn't be able to read it. But in this case, we see the send packet in this case for Aston Martin and the three-way handshake is going to port 80. So HTTP, hypertext transfer protocol. So all I'm doing is looking for anything that might be of interest. Remember in the static capture file, we had FTP traffic. So we came across that with FTP file transfer protocol, the data is in clear text. So here what we're looking for is the data with Aston Martin. So now I just right click the send packet, which is right here after the query. And I use my methodology of following the stream. So now we get in here and we have information. Remember red is the client, blue is the server. And we see right in here, we see what? We see that they're running 
on their server, Microsoft IIS 8.0. So again, this is all data and information we've been able to obtain because we have a process and methodology for doing protocol analysis. So now if I close out of this, I clear my filter, and I continue my little quest. So I scroll down. Again, that's my Aston Martin. And I, we'll show you quicker ways to do this as we go through different things. And there's all this stuff that comes along with going to a website. As I said, unfortunately, that's all part of your data mining. So we keep coming down here. And we'll learn filtering is the way to do this quickly. And we'll learn that once we get into more analysis. And again, as I said, all this information is what's taking place every time you connect to the internet. It's why if you've ever went and you've done a shopping and you've bought something or just looked for something online, curiously, every time you go online, you'll start seeing those types of things. The best example of that, I had an actual, I needed a computer laptop bag. Mine broke when I was on travel one time. So I was looking one night trying to find one. In the next three days, all I seen was advertisements for luggage, laptop bags and luggage. So again, it's all data mining. Data mining is taking place every time we go on the network today. And this is what we're looking here in the network traffic. You're looking at all the things taking place at the network level. This is why it's so important to understand how to do protocol analysis, all right? So different types of things. So once you've had the process, now you can look at different things. And again, as I said, we will start looking at this traffic with a process and methodology that allow us to give us filter, a lot of different filter and information, all right? So a lot of things on this network. So as I scroll down, I'm just looking for any suspicious. Now I got some suspicious traffic coming up here. So now the Wireshark tool is helping me, telling me, hey, you got some duplicate, duplicate acknowledgements. Now that could be a spurious retransmission as it says here. Again, it would require more investigation. But in most cases, it's probably just noise on the network because we have a lot of noise on any of our networks today because, again, data mining. All this comes from data mining. So as you see here, all this noise is taking place on the network. Now, once we get into the next section, we'll teach you how to filter this and only look at specific components of what's taking place on the network. And that's one of the power things, powerful things to do. So if I go here and just click on an example in this HTTP, which is a JPEG. So in this case, there's a JPEG file coming across. So now if I apply my methodology, identify the TCP traffic or UDP traffic, right click it, select follow TCP stream. Now there's all the data there. And this is, again is Aston Martin, CDN Aston Martin. So it's a little bit different Aston Martin than the Aston Martin I looked at before. And it's a referrer from Aston Martin. So if we scroll through here, we have all kinds of information that's taking place. We even got this Adobe Photoshop and we got this guy Norwood, Pete Norwood. We got all kinds of stuff in here, Adobe, all kinds of data. Again, this is nothing but network traffic that's taking place between my machine, and in this case, the Aston Martin server. So that's the power of doing this stuff. You actually learn how to actually do protocol analysis. And what protocol analysis does is teaches you what's taking place on the network. So as you build your skills, you'll get more familiar with this. And like anything else, you gotta practice it over and over again until you get proficient at it. That's how we learn. Next up, we'll continue, we'll work with capture files themselves within the Wireshark tool and explore more ways you can filter that data to make it more granular so you can get a good look at what's taking place on the network.